and welcome back to Ion Radio. I'm Ken, and today I've got a very special guest from the other side of the world. Mars, welcome to the program. Hello, everyone. It's Mars, Mars, the Mars Hole, Grandmaster Salt from Fly Casual. How are you going? Uh, we're going to be talking about the Australian Grand Championships. Uh, Mars was a part of that, and congratulations are in order. Third place. That's a pretty decent showing. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah, it's that's. I've been to probably about three uh, grand championships or nationals as they used to be called back in the day. And it's my highest placing. So yeah, I'm pretty proud of that. Oh, outstanding. Um, and I know one of the things we wanted to talk about, we have to talk about your fleet. So what did you wind up bringing? Uh, so, I, so of course, uh, I have being an Imperial player myself, I had to take the uh, Onager. So I was flying the uh, Onager interdictor, uh, and two Gazantes. So with the Onaga, I had the, the test bed, of course, the orbital bombardment um, cannons, uh, Intel officer, uh, gunner chief a million, veteran gunners. Uh, that was it for that. And then on the interdictor, I had the, uh, Admiral Screed on it, uh, Captain Brunson, uh, heavy iron emplacements, targeting scramblers, um, grav shift reroute, and interdictor title. Uh, and on the the Gazantes, one had uh, comms net and one had uh, boosted comms. Squadron-wise, I had Marek Steele, Colonel Jenden, Tel Tavura, and Valen Rudol. I had to think that for a second there. <laughs> well, it's, it's been about a month, I think, since that tournament actually took place. Yeah. Uh, so my objectives are Iron Storm, Abandoned Mining Facility, and Volatile Deposits. Um, so interesting objectives you might say because for me i've got and and people saying why screed screed's kind of dropped off at 1.5 he's not as good as with pedix and evades being good for me i i feel like screed is a, a insurance for that 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 crit mm -hmm. uh and also not all ships have pedix not all ships have evades uh when you do see those ships uh, especially if it gets the Onager, like, well, you can't use Pedix at extreme range. So, um, and especially when you're rolling black and, and red dice, greed becomes valuable. Um, and of course, the two objectives that I do have, the Volatile Deposits and Iron Storm, they're crit-based objectives. Mm -hmm. So Screed and those objectives and the Onager play well. So now when you're shooting the Onager, you don't have to choose the beam. You can choose the crit objectives. So, uh, especially for Iron Storm, like Iron Storm, you have your, you've got your roids, and you've got the interdictor. It brings them back with the grav shift, mm -hmm. and then they're in your in your deployment area, and you just lay back and start play out, um, popping away with the uh, Iron Storm tokens. So, uh, a good way to um, farm points, and that's what a lot of my fleets are, and uh, these nasty, annoying. Um, point farming lists which uh everyone kind of gives you that you know that sour face of ugh but uh for me it, it's 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 the way to with especially with an onager and interdictor your interdictor is not going to be that kind of killer of a ship it's that support ship that helps you out uh and um of course the abandoned mining facility and interdictor unless if you've got what tambor on the other side uh it's going to get you it's going to get you those points as well too so uh that's why I, I i see in my fleet what i can do especially with those objectives and those objectives when you pull them out and you give them to another player and they start looking and reading figure out what to do you know you've got something good because the when they start going yep this one all right we've got some you know they know of the you know of the objective but when they start reading not knowing what's going on especially in a, in a big tournament they'll start forgetting they'll they'll forget things and uh because uh i remember playing uh on my third round uh opponent i think it was he had an ssd went second player put my objectives down and he started reading and i started smiling <laughs> Because you, you just know, you know, they look and it's like, where's, where's most wanted? Where's, where's, you know, where's the usual ones that you see on the board? And, and um, he goes, oh, yeah, I'll pick Iron Storm. I'll be, I've got the SSD. I'll be speed two. I'll be in the, in the rocks quickly before you know it. 
So I put the rocks down. It's like, oh, you put the rocks down. So quick reads the objective. To, uh, it's like, oh, yeah, you do put the, all the rocks down. And then he, I put down the grav shift token. It's like, what's that? Oh, that's grav shift. Oh. <laughs> and, that and, and, is probably and, one of the, the funniest things I see happening. I'm guilty of it myself. But yeah. You don't really fully think through the opponent's fleet and the objective you just picked. And as soon as they do that, the yeah. light bulb goes on and you realize, well, I just lost. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's silly how Armada can be that kind of a game where you've lost on turn zero, but uh, it, it's, it, it's kind of like, well, that didn't turn out well. Let's see how I can kind of advance, you know, take the advantage back. You kind of re- take that uh, initiative back. So yeah, it can be that kind of moment, but also can it be that, how can I counter back that? Mm-hmm. So, uh, but the, to the credit of the player, he did really well. He was an awesome player to play with. Um, um, so Lester was his name. Uh, if he does watch it, uh, he was a really good player to play with. And it was a really fun game. Uh, and to see it interdict to butt heads of an SSD, just keep crashing and still surviving and still repairing. That's what it does best. So uh, it, uh, I, I, I I, I, I just realized I don't want to shoot because he had salvo on it and I just left it like, you know what? I'm just going to leave it. You're going to keep butting into it and I'll just keep my own and shooting on the side and collecting iron storm points. Thank you very much. Hey, that works. And, you know, I like the idea of, mm. of using screed because one of the things I've noticed since 1.5 came out, mm. and you hit the nail on the head, the mm. evade, they're going to re-roll that double black uh, with the crit. Yeah. If you can get a second one uh, in with, with, uh, with screed, now yeah. all of a sudden... The choice is: Do we spend out the evade and That's get rid it. of the crit, or or do we just take it? Uh, and and it's I love it. It's absolutely brilliant. Yeah, that that's how I I view. Uh, using screed because like if you roll because i've got hies on the interdictor you're always rolling those three blue dice and you're always going to get a crit here or there so you always evaluate saying do i need that extra crit does he have that evade can i chuck out that red and and put in that extra mm-hmm. blue dice just in case if i need to uh, again with the honor guy like do i need a, a hit crit do what, what what do i need because we've, we've got a chief vermilion and the leading let like, the um not advanced no. gunnery, the uh, veteran gunners. Veteran gunners, you can always, you know, think about that role, what you can do with it. Like, you know, do I need, you know, if I have that uh, blank on gunner tree for a million, I've got all that perfect role. I can swap one out and do, and use that as the screed dice to, to get that hit crit on that black die. Uh, have I rolled really badly? Uh, what I usually always get for some weird reason when I, I've played this list, I always roll all these red blanks and have but one dice be a double always happens for some weird reason so i'm going to achieve a million that double and put whatever a blank or a hit there and veteran gun is the whole thing again so that's that's uh, i see again and of course and it comes up kind of okay mediocre roll again i can still screed that that blank and get something out of it so uh yeah for me it's screed is yeah it can be a ne- it can be a downside of 1.5, but also if you think about it, if you also plan for it, uh, it can work to your advantage as well. And being that offensive admiral, it, it works well with the Onager as well. But that, that, that for, for context-wise, that is my main competitive fleet that I usually find. That's the one that I bring to tournaments. Um, it's It's been an evol- evolution of... Uh, of fleets that I started off with, like it started off as an ISD and two victories at the start of the of when I started playing. So it's always been evolving, evolving, changing, changing, and it's become that fleet that it is right now. So now that actually brings up an interesting side question: How long have you been playing Armada? Well, technically, I've been playing since I've, the game came out. Um, uh, as you're aware of the Fly Casual channel, we started off playing X-Wing. Um, so we, we got into X-Wing and we started playing that and we got competitive with that. And then Amada came out and we, I got the core set and I started playing a couple of games. I was confused. I'm like, oh, I don't know about this game. Ian goes to me, trust me, you'll love this game. You'll love it more than X-Wing. And I kind of go, well, X-Wing's my first love. How can you go against your first love? It's like, no, nah, you're, you're lying, Ian. I'll, 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 never, I'll never love Amada as much as X-Wing. And then constantly it, it just, 
he was right. That's the saddest thing I've got to say about that. He was right. It, it evolved. It changed. And as much as X-Wing changed and then Amada came back into my, into that kind of fold, it's like, you know what? Amada is a better game. And hence, um, so yeah, I've been playing since the start, but I kind of got fully involved more into it probably about 20, uh, uh, say 2016, I'd say, 2017 the time wave two was it came out with the isd and everything yeah or well, when the uh, yeah basically when the isd2 came out that's when i said you know what um yeah that looks really awesome i need to start playing so uh yeah so i i i started getting to the to the game and started to get into the uh the mechanics better and it's just like you know i really fell in love with the game that's outstanding uh it's always fun to hear the stories of uh, you know, how people get involved in Armada. And then in this case, out of X-Wing and now nah, nah, I don't, I don't want to play Armada. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, you, I just thought, no, no, it's like X-Wing so cool. It's my first love. It's, I can't go back against it. And then it just slowly crept in and, and, and I realized how good a game of, of Armada can be. Um, don't get me wrong. X-Wing is still fun. It's still enjoyable. Of course, with the recent changes that's happened now, uh, I still play it casually and we still play it uh, on, on the stream when we can, uh, but Amada's become the, the, the love now. <laughs> All right. So let's get back to, uh, I had to take the detour. Uh, you yeah, of course. You to talk about that. So uh, let's get back then to the Grand Championship. So uh, yep. clearly, you had to play a couple other fleets and you said that you've been working on this for some time now. It's a couple different iterations yes. uh, and we'll get, we'll get back to what your next iteration might be when we talk a little bit later. Cause I'm going to ask about rapid reinforcements. Of course. Of course. Uh, but let's, let's stay on the tournament for the moment. Yeah. Uh, in terms of what you faced, I mean, wh what were the challenges? What kind of fleets did you face while you were playing? I'm just curious to see, you know, what else was out there in the meta in Australia? Yeah. So uh, because uh, I'll just give you a little backstory as well, because of, of what was happening uh, with the the championship, we only had did have 13 players show up uh, for the tournament. We did have a bit of COVID uh, running through the the the, the 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 state at that time uh, where it was happening. So the uh, the TO the um, couple of about four or five players were actually were isolated on the night before. So numbers were a bit low than expected on the day. So, um, so for me, it was we were facing against thirteen other people. Most, like five of them, were players that came with me from our state. So, I, unfortunately, two of my games uh, were with the regulars that I play, and we constantly battle each other on every Thursday night and test our fleet. So, the first game was against um, uh, Ash. Uh, he is one of the regulars. And, of course, the first game, you travel all that way, and you travel a local, and, and he knows your fleet, and he knows my fleet. And, uh, yeah, and, and they know not to go second. Uh, they know not to go um, first. Oh, sorry, they, they know not to make me go second. So uh, so they always choose first play. And I'm like, oh, here we go. Okay. So it was, uh, unfortunately, it was it, the struggles with me was facing my own locals in our, in that tournament. Um, once I got the other players, it, it was, it was a little bit easier. So uh, the, the meta in Australia is it, it, it varies from state to state um, for us. It's a lot of um, it's not, a lot of squadrons it's medium squadron builds for a lot of us um uh, a lot of a lot of players for us are actually squadronless as well they they feel like squadrons are a bit of a too much of a hassle um in in other states i can't be wary of the the meta itself but it's it's very fascinating different uh, fluid on from state to state they'll you'll have your player that will bring like well this is total uh, absolute brilliance of of makes up and that uh but some players will bring that your standard lists in there so uh the winner who actually won uh james you know he brought double onyx a sloan list uh and it's just you, you look at it and it's like it's not a sloan list it's like got a couple of interceptors marrick jed and it's 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 a really small ball but it did really well so it was just unbelievable so uh it, yeah it's 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 a really mishmash of um local meta that that dominates those these uh tournaments 
Did you wind up facing that uh, double on Edgar Sloan list at all? Yes. Yeah, I did. That was my final match. So what happened was in the tournament, uh, because we had such low numbers, the tournament organizer just actually made it into five rounds for the whole day, for the whole two days. So we did the first three rounds on the first day and then two rounds on the second day. Uh, so, uh, so there was no cut. Uh, so I went, uh, four and O oh, and my final round was against James, the winner. Uh, unfortunately, if, uh, if I wanted to win the whole thing, I had to 10 one him because he was that far advanced. So, um, it wasn't going to happen. Like, uh, you know, you, you keep yourself positive thinking, yep, you're going to do well. You're going to do great, but you're not going to beat, uh, you're not going to, the, the guy in front is, uh, you know, cruising along at the moment. So I was lucky to, I, I lost the game, but I, I, I lost it on a, on a, um, uh, six, five. So, which, you know, it was a very close, good game. Uh, and you, you find out that, you know, these guys at the top, they are human. They do make mistakes. And he could have actually killed my interdictor, but uh, uh, he missed out on an opportunity because um, I'll talk about the actual game itself. My interdictor was on one hull. His onika was had his ignition shot straight in front and he could have wiped me because he was first player. He could have activated into onika and blew me straight away. He actually activated his Gazanti first and sent Marek in to finish him off. Uh, I had no brace, no redirect, two contains and one hole left. And he was short. He sent Marek over to on the unshielded side. He rolled his two hits. Targeting scramblers. One hit. Captain Brunson. No hits. And then he just looked at it and went, Then he had to, of course, being a squadron to Gazanti sent it. He had he only had an a, a interceptor nearby to roll blanked out. And then he goes, I'll shoot with the Gazanti. Of course, the Gazanti was on the other side. Of the, the interdictor had shields on that side. I'm like, good. I'll activate my interdictor, repair, off I go. Away from the ignition arc from the, uh, from the, uh, from the Onaga. So, as I said, the good players do make mistakes. Five games uh, with the same fleet. That's it's hard to keep you know your mind in it the entire time. Uh, you know, yeah. even playing three games in one day is a lot. Uh, even when you're playing the same fleet, yeah. And there's just so many things to think about and remember. Uh, and if you've got squadrons, I mean, it's mentally taxing. And I think that's uh, one absolutely. thing that people don't understand uh, at the high competitive levels. Is yeah. that it's not just ah, move my ship. There's so much that goes into every little move. Hundred percent, hundred percent, and that's probably one of the main hints. If I give anyone going to like a big tournament uh, when they're a big uh, when they're flying something that, that that looks very complex, learn play play your fleet until you are tired and sick of it. And that's when you go to the tournament because then you'll know every trigger, everything it does, everything it can't do, everything, its limits and its strengths, you know. Uh, for me, that's, people say you're playing the same thing again, Mars. If, for me, if, if anyone that knows me and anyone sees the Fly Casual banner, my face is on the interdictor. I am a absolute love i love the interdictor my the interdictor is my ship uh so for me flying the interdictor is second nature for me so uh, it, it i it, for anyone doing these tournaments i tell them fly your fleets until you're absolutely tired of them because at least you'll know what to do you can go in some kind of semi-autopilot when it comes to these tournaments uh and you can kind of not think about, oh, what do I do next? And then forget triggers. And that's the one thing you don't want to be doing, forgetting triggers and missed opportunities in these big tournaments. No, when you do that, you always think about it either at the end of the turn when you go to set your command dials or something, yeah. then you want to kick yourself. Yeah. Because then you know what could have been the win wasn't. And uh, yeah, it's the few times I've been in a tournament recently, there's always one thing that I, I forget to do. Yeah, uh, and then it's the whole face palm moment. Never all yeah, to do that. Yeah, hundred percent. And right. and you and of course that that drive home or that you know fly home. You think of what could it have been and all that. It goes through your head and just like yeah, try to avoid as much as you can. But uh, it, it always happens. You, you know, you always think of what what could have been. 
Now, you have, uh, along with myself, kind of a unique way, though, of looking at fleets that we fly and ways we do that, since most of our games tend to be recorded or they're on streams and whatnot. Do you ever yes. go back, take a look and say, oh, man, I totally messed that up uh, oh, or I should have done this? Hundred percent, especially when you when you lose, uh, you definitely want to review the tape. And like any sports person, that uh, they review themselves and see what could have done been done better. So probably one of the best things about recording yourself is you can go right. This is when I should have done this instead of that. So uh, yeah, if you probably a good thing for players emerging, even to just to record themselves, if if even not if they're don't need to put it live or didn't, don't need to put it on YouTube, probably record themselves and watch themselves play and see where they could do better or where they've done well. You know, it's not about, you know, being negative about yourself, but also looking at that look worked well. I should remember that. So. Well, I definitely find that you learn more when you tend to lose or make mistakes. Uh, yeah. That just improves the gameplay uh, that you have. So I'm, I figure for me personally, by the time we get to our 10th year of running Ion Radio, I'll be undefeatable. So (laughs) (laughs) that's it. That's it. You you, you know, keep little baby steps. Exactly. So, uh, you know, can't can't go to winning every game all the time. So that that wouldn't be fun. So now uh, you've had your tournament. uh, You did well. And then a few weeks later, drops rapid reinforcements with a whole yep. bunch of new ships, new squadrons. I'm really curious when you saw that come out, we saw what you did and we'll have a link to that video that you talked about rapid reinforcements uh, down below. Yeah. But um, what are you thinking in terms of getting anything incorporated into your, your competitive fleet now? Definitely be Darth Vader. That's, <laughs> that's hands down. Um, for me, lucky for me, I don't use Office of Vader or any type of iteration of Vader in my fleet uh, because I have all that dice mitigation, that all that dice fixing with Screed and and um, and uh, veteran gunners and all that. So and Gunner Chief Vermillion. So for me, um, tie Defender Vader is is a no brainer, um, especially with Tell being double those both those rogues they can kind of do what they need to do and and tell needs can defend vader from any attack uh, as long as you pace them right uh so for me yeah I, I'm, I'm going to test out first off i, I, I want to test out vader because for me it's my list right now it's i can't fit both in uh it ha- i have to drop it, it one um i could i uh, if i want to drop say I, I find Valen Ru- I find Valen Rudor very um, under cost of what he does. Uh, for me, the reasons why I bring Valen Rudor is he's basically uh, almost a yin and yang to Vader because Vader goes for the the um, uniques and Valen will go for the generics. Um, and also, what I use because a lot of the meta that we find is uh, rebels use Shara Bay. And I use Valen against Shara Bay and people going, well, hang on. He just rolls black dice. Why would you use that? It's simple. I use him as the whole, you can't attack me with counter Shara Bay. So I send someone in first, like Tell, attack with Tell. And then I send Valen to not get tapped tap by uh, Shara. And then I'll then get gendered to double tap Valen to make sure either he either uses his scatter like get rid of his scatter or he has to brace it so uh you know um of course being black so you're not going to get that accuracy but as if, as long as you're kidding shara and she can't counter back uh she's gonna use tokens either get rid of the scatter or use that brace within two rounds i mean you should be able to get rid of something there uh that's hopefully it, yeah. that scatter and then you can really take her down that's it. That's it. And 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 when when you know, when you roll in Valen and a, there's a, a buddy next to him, and and then they roll, they grab the uh, the two blue the three blue dice for Shara. I go, sorry, that's you can't do that. So it, you just you just see the confusion on their face, and and it's like, and then you have to tell them Valen what Valen does. And for thirteen points for the cheapest Tie Fighter, I feel like he's just a bargain basement. Uh, kills 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 generics really well with that swarm reroll free blacks Mm -hmm. and also just just to be annoying for those counter aces or or counter uh generics as well too 
No, that's cool. I think Vader's going to see a lot of play uh, in general. Uh, yeah. anyway, I, I've got a couple ideas for Vader that I want to bring out. So uh, I'll yeah. probably bring him to the local store and test yeah. him out just to, just to yeah. see what he does. Plus, now I have a new paint scheme for my uh, TIE Defenders, which you know, for nice. me, that's the fun part of Armada, right? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I, I look I, definitely because um, for me, I, I'm finding that either my Gazantis get blown up or the Jenden uh, uh, is too far for relay or uh, Marek is too far away from the boosted comms. At least Vader in the end, if he's still alive, he can go and run and chase whatever he needs to kill. So I look forward to that kind of aspect of Vader be able to do at the start of course i'll be activating him with the 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 kazanti which is sounds a bit counterintuitive but um it of course it all depends on the on the situation you can activate him or not activate him and still get that you know move in attack with him which i find really awesome yeah, it's it's going to be interesting to see how you, know, you got to give it a good three four months and then you're going to see yeah. all the, the really weird things that come out with with vader and everyone else uh or all the other different squadrons the new ships uh it's kind of fun it's like a whole new yeah game. yeah right now uh, for my fun list i've actually got uh two victories and a venator uh with just a v19 and anakin so that's a t- that's a tarkin that's a tarkin fleet and i'm just and, and all spats everyone's got spats uh and i'm having fun with that at the moment so I've been enjoying the victories uh, and the spats myself. Uh, I've, I've enjoyed the victory since the game came out. Uh, <laughs> everyone else wanted to jump to the, the ISD too. And uh, I, I stuck with the overcosted Grand Moff Tarkin and the, the stupid overcosted victories. And uh, eventually I saw the light, but uh, yeah. you know, it's good to see these old models come back out uh, onto the table again. Yeah, no, I I love the victories. Uh, uh, not as much as I used to, but but now that uh, as much now because of what they've done with rapid reinforcements. But my as as I said, with my uh, my um, my main fleet, my main competitive fleets, the iterations of other fleets that have come beforehand, and that's was that start first starting fleet was probably an ISD with two VSDs at the start when I started off as competitiveness. So the, the VSD was replaced by the interdictor. So, so uh, yeah, so it, you know, the, the I, VSD has some kind of uh, emotional attachment to it where I used to put like, you know, um, overload pulse is my favorite. And if you've seen any of my early stuff, it, overload pulse, uh avenger was the uh the, the wow. jam for me so uh so the, the vsd would go first do the overload pulse and then avenger would come in and just wipe the floor with whatever's supposed to die so and uh yeah i've had some fun tournaments with that where people are going i can't use my tokens no <laughs> Uh, that, that's fun. It's bringing back some memories. I may have to uh, just pull out a couple of uh, wave one and two items just, just for fun, throw them back out on the table. And- oh, yeah. And, and Warlord as well. I loved mm-hmm. Warlord. That was just an absolute base of it. One of these days is a Dominator that's a 12 point title. Yes. I've yeah. got to figure out some way to get that into the game and make it useful. Uh, you yeah. Know, it's still an obscene amount of points. Uh, yeah. For for yeah. victory, I mean, you're already up at a minimum of 85 points if you take a VSD one. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. We'll have to figure that one out. You think you think they would fix that up, but no. <laughs> well, maybe this will be something that we see in either another upgrade card pack or like a ship title pack, or or who knows? I mean, uh, we're kind of all at a loss of what AMG may or may not do right now. So uh, we've talked about uh, the Grand National or the Grand uh, Tournaments, Grand Nationals of Buick. Apologies. Yeah. Uh, the Australian Grand Championships. We've talked about your fleet, talked about rapid reinforcements, number one. So let's talk a little bit, uh, just because I'm curious to hear some of the origins here. Let's talk about fly casuals. You said that sure. it initially came out to be uh, X-Wing. Uh, you know, how did that get started? And then, you know, I think you kind of already talked about how it got into Armada, but yeah, let, let, let's talk about sure. fly casuals. Sure. So yeah, we, uh, we, yeah, I, I actually, um, I'll start off right from the start. Well, I'm a massive uh, X-wing Tie Fighter PC game, uh, tragic from the '90s. So I used to, I love those things. I've still got the boxes and and the manuals somewhere, you know, in, in all all locked up, and I can't throw them away because they're such beautiful things from the '90s. It's a grand masterpiece from LucasArts. Uh, so that was my love and obsession uh, 
from the 90s. And when I heard there was an X-Wing coming back, I'm like, oh, wow, I've got to see what's going on. Then I realized it was a, a, a tabletop game. Mm-hmm. And I'm going myself, oh, tabletop. Uh, I'm like to myself, that's, that's, that's 40K. That's, you know, big guys with angry attitudes. And I, I don't want to deal with that. I'm like, no, thanks. And then I'm like, oh, I'll give it a go. You know, as I said, I was more of the PC kind of guy, play by myself kind of thing. So I, I, I bought this core set and, you know, I'm like, oh, this is really interesting. And then I got Ian involved. And it's like, Ian, you got to play this game. This is really cool. It's like we got, and then we got hooked and then we we got a core set. And then we found our local where uh, we, uh, which is Tezza's Games in, in Melton it is our sponsor. Uh, and basically it, it just snow healed from there. So we started playing and then we realized how much we loved it and how much awesome the community was. I still remember my first tournament when I went there and I got all these prizes just for showing up. I'm like, oh, wow, look at this. This is fantastic. And, you know, it was, you know, little, you know, wiring cards, you know, tokens. I'm like, oh, Oh, wow. Uh, so for me, and then it was just, it was just happy thoughts, happy feelings. And, and it, it snowballed from there where Ian and I looked at, at that time being 2014, 2015, there wasn't a lot of streaming, a lot of not weren't streaming back at that time, but a lot of content for uh, X-Wing at the time. So we decided to create the channel at that time. You still had your, like your team covenants and all that, uh, doing the 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 massive stuff the gen cons the the world stuff we didn't want to take it too seriously we did we wanted to make you know make sure we did a recording but not major like you know overproduction or anything like that so we wanted to keep it casual so hence the name fly casual came around not knowing that other people were using that fly casual term for X-Wing already. We didn't know that at that time because we were still kind of a little bit disconnected from the U S. Uh, so we just took the name of fly casual being, we are flying casual here. We're trying to make things casual here. We're not too serious. We're just two dudes playing X-Wing and of course, you know, out yelling and screaming of dice and so forth. Uh, so we started off with X-Wing, we started off doing bat reps, uh, recording uh, bat reps and recording tournaments because um, at the time the live streaming wasn't there at what part was needed. So uh, so we did that. We And then, of course, Amada came in and I explained how Amada decided to take over. And uh, we realized that Amada was... We, we started doing bat reps, but it was also hard at the same time. We also, at that time, be, uh, we had our own lives. We had started to get our own families as well. Uh, recording, doing bat reps was getting a little bit harder. So we needed to find a way to continue the channel, but also reduce our workload. So we went to live stream about, a couple, uh, about midway through, probably about... 2017, 2018, I think it was, we started live streaming instead, uh, just to uh, just to alleviate from the work has the the, the 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 workload that the channel was going through. Um, granted, it's it it you know it's not high end co- production quality, but you get some kind of product, you get some kind of um, sh- you know production, some live show, and a lot of things, especially say for grand championships or any kind of tournament people like to watch them live to see them straight off instead of waiting a couple of months for these things to be produced and edited so that's how we went to the live stream so we still do a couple of videos here of unboxings and talks um what we record but uh that's uh, we mostly do streaming of amada and x-wing uh and also i've started playing world of tanks as well too so we've got a little bit of a couple of those happening as well too so that's really the story of fly casual uh we'll, we'll continue we're still continuing doing our streaming uh, and of course always venturing into new areas as, as a, t- a world of tanks uh, but we uh we enjoy it uh it, it comes it comes sometimes it's a bit of a hassle but uh we still love it <laughs> well that's the thing as long as you're enjoying it it's totally worth doing uh yeah. i know i for one enjoy your content you guys keep me entertained so thank you very much uh from thank at you least one person that enjoys your stuff so Thanks, Ken. I appreciate that. Yeah, and what and one of the things I should I would have bring out is the hassle of uh, not hassle. What's that? The the 
the two edged sort of streaming live in Australia because uh, because of the time zones it being you know US and Australia you get we stream at weird hours like for us on a Thursday night when we start streaming it'll probably be like a uh would be Thursday morning early morning for you guys so uh it, it, it's 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 probably one of the the down the downsides of streaming live but on the other hand uh if we do have a live tournament on say on a Saturday it'll be Friday night for you guys so we will pick up the, the 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 guys who you know want to watch something live at night um compared to if we're streaming say live in Saturday on Saturday during a Saturday a lot of people want to go to tournaments and go do other things so uh, so we it's it's a two-edged sword we, we, we we're we're happy to do and uh, sometimes we we get it right and sometimes well you know th th that's what the replays are for <laughs> oh that's true i mean i know even right now it's about 4 30 in the afternoon for me and it's uh, probably about 7 30 or 8 o'clock in the morning for seven, you. yeah 7 20 yeah. yeah yes and, and you're on your way to an armada tournament today too aren't you Yes, yeah. So that's later on. So I've got some time. I've already pre prepared for that. So uh, yeah. So yeah. I'm I'm, I'm just head. I'll be heading out to that and uh, yeah, enjoying that. Um. Yeah. I'll, look, I'll, I'll just talk about the Amada scene in general because I think a lot of people don't understand why numbers are a bit low on um in Australia. Because to for example, Australia Amada is. I'll, I'll give you an example. Australia is. 20% smaller than the US land size. Mm -hmm. And but we've you guys got a population of 300 million or so. We've got a population of 25 million. So that kind of gives you the comparity of what how why we our numbers aren't the biggest um I don't know if you want to use this or not but uh it's just some comparison for some viewers saying or oh, grand championships it's not a lot of people we usually our nationals are about our biggest number is about 28, 30 players for a championship. So uh, for a martyr wise, we're still smaller than X-Wing, uh, but, uh, but we still, uh, we still got numbers and we still got some players who are really good. So, you know, and you've seen the master of the fleet guys, they, they, you know, they're up North from us. They, you know, they've done their Amada, you know, they're good at their Amada and their lead legion. Uh, and um, yes, that's and of course us as well so there there are amount of players here in australia not as much as x-wing but uh we uh we we try to make it as, as as best as we can with the numbers that we do have so well i suspect to an extent though that throughout australia you're mostly scattered uh, yes so that's the got, other thing too yeah you've got a lot more area to have to cover uh, yeah i think for john and myself we're, we're lucky in a sense that we're right almost dead center in the united states in chicago yeah and the advantage we have is there's well first of all fantasy flight is just up north in minnesota a couple hours yeah uh, and we had so many armada players here it's like we're one of the major three or four hubs yeah. in the states uh, but that kind of skews our numbers <laughs> uh, yeah yeah just a little yeah um, yeah no you're 100 percent. like yeah it, we all live on the eastern seaboard right. or on the west and in the middle it's just all desert that's that's basically it for australia uh so yeah um yeah and i went to i've you know i'm, I'm really i've been been playing amada everywhere i've been to almost every nationals in every state in australia and i've been to worlds in chicago when i was at adepticon so uh i i really enjoy playing amada and i i travel and I, I hopefully if worlds happens again this year i will definitely making the trip to worlds when wherever or whenever it is I don't think they've released that yet, but hopefully it's no. somewhere local to uh, to us. And then if you're out in the Chicagoland area, of course, you have to stop by. We'll have to play a game or two together. Absolutely. hundred uh, percent. I'm going to wrap things up because uh, cool. I know you've got to at least start thinking about getting ready to go. Uh, oh, and I know job. I've got other things I need to take care of. But uh, before oh. we do go, I do want to say I've had an absolute blast. So thank Fantastic. you. Fantastic. So cool. oh, <laughs> oh no, I love loved it too as well. Thanks a lot, Ken. I appreciate it. I love the work you guys are doing too. Um uh it's it's awesome quality videos that you guys are, are producing. So uh Thank you very much. it's 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 always good to see the Amada community uh you know rallying against and, and and forging on what we can do for the community. So completely agree. Our Armada is not quite dead yet, is it? <laughs> no, 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 no. And if 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 any of us, you know, the the um bigs and all that and um 
in the ground cancel and 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 us and and anyone who does content is 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 still doing it and we're showing it that's the important thing completely agree yeah all right so mars thank you so much for joining me today uh really no, appreciate good. your time um you know we'll have to get together some point play a game or two of armada just one of us has to fly across the world so. <laughs> yeah well as i said that would probably be me hopefully we'll, we'll, we'll have to catch up and uh uh, hopefully, as I said, if Worlds happens and I'll be over there, uh, I'll see if I can. Uh, I'm sure I can uh, deviate where I need to Chicago if need be. I've, I've been there before when I said for Adepticon, so uh, it's not too hard to get there. So all good. All right. Well, looking forward to seeing you next time. Mars, thank you very much. All right. Thanks a lot, Ken. Appreciate it.